All right. Uh, I did not know what kind of whale I was swallowed up into. Uh, I feel like I've been barked out on another planet, but um, that's not true. Here I am on the earth. So I have some more things to say. I did my study today. I have notes and everything. And this is a weird one and I'm really excited about it. So um, I just want to restate again that my purpose for this whole channel for everything is to really encourage independent study. I do believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Um, do I believe it is every word of God ever spoken? No, I don't. Um, but I believe it is enough to establish a relationship that's built on trust. And the more that you study, the more that the word begins to blossom. And then it's like your whole world begins to illustrate the truth that you read in this book. At least that's what happens for me. Um, so if you're looking for some truth, there's no harm in, in studying. If you want to try it, I think it's a good idea. Uh, it definitely has been a guide and a huge help for me my entire life. Um, and there's just so many good messages. Everything good I know, almost everything good I know, everything good I know, and also, you know, from some people. I learned a lot of good from this book. Um, so before I start this uh, discussion, I guess, it's just me talking, but y'all are welcome to comment. Um, before I say this, I want to make it clear that I am not saying or condoning, you know, any uh, reckless, acts of divination or you know like I said um, people who receive messages from God they, they come from God and I, I don't think that we should just you know be rolling around messing around in uh, energies that are not given to us um, <clears throat> that being said I do have some things to say um, da, 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 da. And also, I want to be clear that I am not saying that um, ministers and anointed, you know, preachers of the Word of God do not have authority to teach the Word. They do. Um, but I think that as, you know, students and as, you know, responsible members of the body of Christ, we have to show up with diligent study. And, um... Sometimes we have to challenge what what we learned and that doesn't mean that God didn't put a message in you know Every minister's heart a certain way, you know the, all the messages on that day are not for us, you know, sometimes he has um, Another way of saying things to us individually and that's why it's also important that you have that personal relationship because You've got to be able to discern what God is saying to you and how you are to incorporate you know, the messages that you get into your life. So, Jesus says clearly, um, it's Matthew ten thirty four. He says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I have come not to send peace, but a sword. And, you know, that sword is the truth. Like, you've got to search for the truth and find, like, Jesus brought it to you. It's not... It's not hidden, you know, but you've got to read it and study it and be able to understand it. You know, is, is it a truth if you haven't studied it? Um, not yet, not really, how could it be? You've got to know, you've got to know what your truth is. Um, so, you know, if God isn't going to deny you relativity, then neither will I. Um, so, that's the plan. The plan is that, you know, Jesus came knowing that he was going to cause uh, a ruckus. <laughs> He's going to cause disagreements between his people, between you and your family, between you and your church. And like, this is meant to be, you know, so that we can learn to hear him and to have our own relationship and to, you know, trust our personal relationship. I believe. That's what I believe. So, 
um, I have an example of this situation and this is just an example just because I, I didn't plan on this but I realized that I have heard this particular story I was reading Acts I was looking for something else but I stumbled on uh, Acts chapter 16 uh, starting in verse 16 and I have heard this story presented more than once um, as something completely different than what I read so I want to stick to the scripture and stick to what it actually says and I'll just I'll just read it for you and then I'll, I'll then I'll go on my my rant all right so starting with verse 16 it says and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying the same followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation and this she did many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour and when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. Now, there is more to the story. To paraphrase, um, they were beaten and thrown in jail, and then they prayed, and there was a great earthquake, and the walls of the prison were shaken, and the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. That is an important story. Um, I guess, I guess it does apply to this as well. I'll, I'll adjust that later. But the point is that we know, let's see, do, 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 um, Mark chapter 10, Jesus gave his 12 disciples power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and disease. So this is the thing. We know that he gave his disciples the authority to cast out spirits and to heal the sick the same way that Jesus did. Um, so that was a thing. So the disciples, Paul in this case, has the authority over this spirit, okay? But what it says is that a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Now, when we find spirits of devils in other places in the Bible, um, they're defined by unclean it said this is an unclean spirit this is an unclean spirit this doesn't say that it says she's possessed with a spirit of divination that brought her masters much gain by soothsaying so it doesn't say that the spirit is unclean and I know like some people are gonna have things to say about that um, but what she was saying you know, from the information she got from the spirit or, you know, what she was channeling is saying, these men are servants of the most high God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. Now, she's speaking the truth. That's absolutely the truth. That is who they were. So I've heard the story said so many times that this girl must have been following um, the disciples as in like heckling them, like harassing them, uh, making fun of them. But there's no evidence of this in the text. Um, there's nothing that says that she had any ill will at all. It doesn't say that here. So, you know, when you go to church and you listen to a sermon and you can hear it, that is a way to look at it. That is possible. We don't know. But the text does not say that that was her spirit. That was her intention. Okay. What it does say is that Paul got sick of it because it was over and over and he didn't want to hear it anymore. And so he turned around and banished the spirit, which he had authority to do, okay? So that ticked off the people who were making money off the spirit, you know? Doesn't say, like, I don't know if that's right or wrong, you know? It was legal in their country, they're Romans. So it does say that they were mad and uh, Paul and his buddy gets beat up and they put him in jail and they went to prison. Um, there is no clear punishment for this woman. It doesn't say that she did anything wrong. It doesn't say that it was a terrible spirit. Um, and if we're really, 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 really going to get down and dirty with things, you know, 
saying to the masses and saying to everyone that divination itself is evil. Um, there is an evil in relying on divination instead of going to God, instead of going to Jesus, instead of relying on the word. Absolutely, I think that's true. And this is coming from me. This is my own reasoning, okay? But I don't see any evidence anywhere that being in prayer, that God, you know, opening your heart and your mind and your eyes to the understanding, like when you have this communion and the word does blossom before you and, and you see all these layers to his messages, um, is that not divination? Is that not the Holy Spirit speaking to you and through you? It is. It absolutely is. So the message that I'm getting here, you know, just like when, <laughs> where did I put it? Mark 9:38. Okay. So consider this. If we go to Mark 38, and John answered him saying, "Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbade him because he followed not us." But Jesus said, "Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part so the message that i'm getting from all this is mind your own business if whatever gift that god gives to whatever other person whatever their mission is in life um as we share the word of god if you know if you feel like it's your mission if you're called to share and help to bring people peace and uh you know share the goodness that is god um, I think Jesus is clearly saying that we, like, what good does it do for us to condemn anyone else who is not speaking against God? Whatever, whatever message they have that does not work against Christ is for us. So leave them alone. That's what I'm getting from it. And... You know, you don't have to think the same way, but when I look at the facts, when I look at the scripture, you know, it kind of looks like uh, Paul and his buddy didn't like being pestered by the truth. You know, maybe they didn't like it. Maybe he does have the authority to cast out that spirit, but they got beat up and thrown in jail. Not saying they weren't forgiven, not saying they weren't disciples of Christ, not saying... God didn't fix it and it all worked out because, you know, the guy in charge there then was like, oh, you know, <laughs> God saved us. It's all good. But the point is, the disciples had their mission. This girl's telling the truth. So what if it's annoying? Not your business. Like, <laughs> mind your own business and you won't get beat up and thrown in jail. That's kind of how I take it. I think it's, it's a valid way of looking at it. Completely valid. Um, and I pray about all these things before I do it. And, uh, you know, I'm okay being wrong. I'm totally okay. Like if Jesus wants to like bitch slap me in the face and be like, that's not what you should have said. So be it. He knows my heart and he knows that I am always seeking the truth. It's okay if I was wrong. Um, it's good that I'm always looking for what's right, you know? And, uh, we're all learning. So that's my story today. That's what I have to say. Mind your own beeswax. And if people are working against us, let them be. That's not your problem. Um, you know, people that need your message are going to show up in your life. And, you know, I invite anyone that wants to talk more, please show up in my life. Please, you know, like my videos, subscribe to my channel, share with your buddies. Um, if you think it's annoying and you want to banish this spirit, please just don't. <laughs> I would like to be heard. I'm not trying to bother anybody. Um, but thank you. Thank you for listening at all. Thank you for hearing my perspective. Thank you if you just want to be a good person or if you just want to hear what I'm going to say next. I appreciate you so much.
don't want this video to last forever here. We're at 15 minutes, so that's enough. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good night.